Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another episode of Ask a Fish. Now, before we get into the questions, I'd like to give a massive shout out to Focusrite. I've been using the same single channel interface for the last nine years, which recently has been causing a lot of problems. Also really annoying when I forget to switch inputs and have to redo entire videos all over again. Focusrite sent me the Claret 8 Pre, now I'll never have to worry about that again. Look at how many friggin' holes there are in the back. The preamps are great as well, so clear. But yeah, Focusrite is awesome. They support the overall online guitar community by helping even small channels like mine, so at least I can do a shout them out. If you're looking to start recording music or videos or commentary, really any audio, the Claret series is great, and they've just released their new generation of budget-friendly Scarlet interfaces with upgraded preamps. Definitely recommend checking them out, and now let's jump into your questions. You've been pretty quiet of late. Not really a question, but yeah, my bad for that. Basically, long story short, my aircon went out during a heat wave. Apartment management wasn't able to fix it for weeks for some reason. I don't know if you've ever tried recording with 100 watt amps or using studio lighting in 35 degree weather that's like 95 Fahrenheit, but it sucks. Now, just because I've been away from YouTube though, doesn't mean I haven't been able to keep busy. As most of you know, I've been working with Toman to help design some modern Harley Bentons. Here's some teaser picks here, here, and here. These are still very early prototypes. Things generally take about four iterations before they go into production. So don't expect them like next week. Just thought it would be fun to tease them a bit and show you guys what I've been up to during this mini YouTube sabbatical. But yeah, since Friday I've uploaded a new gear demo where Makari, which is like an eBay competitor, challenged me to find the coolest guitar I could for 300 bucks on their platform. So I found this vintage 86 Epiphone Les Paul 1 with the Steinberger trim. It's a really bizarre thing and because it was made before I was born, Trogli actually helped me out by providing background information on it. Really interesting guitar, I don't know if YouTube notifications messed up or the algorithm ignored me because I've been gone for so long but it got way fewer views than normal. So if you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link in the cards. And I've also got a Summer Nam highlights video up where I saw a bunch of cool stuff, talked to a bunch of cool people in Nashville. But yeah, basically I'm back now. I got a lot of content in the pipeline, but I do have to move again in a few weeks. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm doing the best I can. Finally, motherfucker. I know, right? Worst guitar YouTuber ever. Was the Jericho demoed and I missed it? Nope, not yet. That's one of the aforementioned pipeline projects. The guitar that Jason is talking about is this guy right here. Let me see if I can get the headstock into the frame. There we go. It is a Jericho Edge NT6. NT stands for neck through and it is fucking gorgeous. Look at that walnut and the shade of blue on the spots of maple veneer. Super into these satin stained tops right now. Didn't think I was gonna like playing it at all because it has a stupid flat 20 inch fingerboard radius, but I mean, actually you'll hear all about it in the full review, which is coming whenever I can find the time to put in the rest of the 30 hours to make the thing. You guys have to understand a 20 minute video doesn't just take 20 minutes to make, it takes quite a bit longer. Thoughts on Etsy buying Reverb? Yeah, this kind of came out of nowhere and I'm still trying to figure out what I make of this. So Reverb.com is of course the massively popular online open marketplace for music gear, originally founded by the owner of Chicago Music Exchange. Etsy is another e-commerce website that mainly focuses on handmade crafts and items of all sorts from artwork to trinkets to outdoor grills. And Etsy is buying Reverb for a reported $275 million in cash. Not bad. As for what this means, means for you and me, probably nothing. Etsy plans on having Reverb continue to operate as its own standalone business. For sellers, you might see some more cross-listing options, so if you've got like vintage band posters or custom wood-carved wall hangers, just off the top of my head, I don't know why I got this specific, you might be able to place those listings on both sites automatically and have access to a larger potential customer base. Good financial backing to grow the business is generally always a good thing as well. Ultimately, we'll have to see. What are your thoughts on Etsy buying Reverb? Excited? Disappointed? Don't care? Let me know in the poll. Before we get into the last question, shout out to Julian Gomez and the rest of the awesome patrons for making this content possible. If you want to directly support what I do as well with the honest reviews and coverage, you can join the patron community through the link below and get some awesome bonus perks. Have you seen BC Rich is coming back alive? Okay, so full disclosure, I've never been a massive fan of BC Rich. The shapes are a little extreme for my taste. I did want a Warlock at one point. I think it was uh, a Bolton with Green Flames, Bronze series maybe, when I was like 13, before my obsession with Les Pauls became all too real. But from what I've seen, I'm real happy for you pointy-shaped guitar fans out there. So it looks like BC Rich is back. 
Again, not gonna lie, we talk about Gibson's troubles on the internet a lot, but BC Rich has had it real rough. They're not really my type of guitar. I like the super traditional shape, so I haven't really kept up with everything, but it looks like there have been a couple changes in ownership. Since I've been going to NAMM, my first NAMM was winter 2017. They have not been there. This latest reinvention of the brand looks really promising though, if you're into those pointy shapes. For starters, they look a lot more active on social media, posting more, responding to a lot of comments. That's always a good sign, and and surprisingly, even in 2019, something that a lot of guitar companies still aren't very good at. And then there are the models themselves that they're teasing. These are not low-end budget buys, but instead high-ish end imports. Not too sure about the specifics of the hardware, I'm guessing Hipshot because they're high quality and really popular right now, but all the passive pickups look to be DiMarzios and all the actives are my preferred Fishman Fluences, presumably the modern set. There's even one they teased with an Evertune bridge. Hell yes! For shapes, most of the fan favorites are back. The Mockingbird, the Warlock, the Stealth, the Ironbird. Every model will have neck through construction as well. Every. Single. One. They've also said that a lot of the original people that were with BC Rich during the company's heyday are involved. Really seems like they're trying to make a big return to form with both the imports and the US custom shop. You can tell, even by a lot of the finishes, they're not looking to revive themselves to just push out reissues of the exact same stuff that they made in the 80s. They're looking to be a real competitor in the modern metal guitar market. Bright colored stained veneers, a lot of burl tops, it looks like a lot of inspiration came from like Schecter and Kiesel. Abalone binding as well, like LTD does with a lot of their 1000 series guitars. That being said, they do seem to have some flat black models as well if classic subtlety is more your thing. You know, if subtlety is a word that can be used to describe any BC rich model. Pointy guitars are a 100% not me at all, but the one BC Rich that I've always been tempted to try is the 10 string bitch. It's such an interesting concept for guitar with a regular 6 string headstock and then 4 additional tuning pegs at the other end of the body. So basically the 2 bass strings are normal, then the 4 higher strings have octaves. I don't know, it's just different and unusual, so of course I'd love to have a solid chug on that one. They haven't teased that particular model yet, but I'm still hopeful. Now I'm curious to see if this relaunch does well because from what they're saying, what they're showing, they seem like they're really trying to do it right this time. Thanks to Stranger Things, the buzz around Kramer's revival, there's a decent wave of 80s nostalgia going on right now. But while Kramer has the financial backing of Gibson, BC Rich is going the independent route. Tougher from a business standpoint, maybe better from a community perspective standpoint. At the same time, I guess no one does as pointy a guitar as BC Rich, so there's a niche for that. I don't know, it'll be interesting. Really curious to see what the final specs and price points are. I guess we'll see that at uh, Winter Nam in January-ish. But enough of my thoughts. Obviously, we don't have a lot of information right now, which makes speculation arguably even more fun. But what do you think about this latest BC Rich relaunch? Actually, last minute update. Thanks to Stephen J. Witt for bringing this to my attention. It looks like one retailer has jumped the gun and a few are on reverb right now. If these are indicative of the rest of the line, the new high-end imports are called the Extreme Series and they'll retail for about 1500 US dollars. The three listings are of a Warlock, a Mockingbird, and their new Shredzilla, which is their take on a Super Strat. They all have Niato bodies, and with the exception of the Warlock, have maple caps. I was right, the hardtail bridge on the Shredzilla is hip shot, and it comes with Grover locking tuners. The other two have Floyd Rose bridges, I'm guessing 1500 series, and have non-locking Grover mini rotomatics. Apparently the abalone binding is to commemorate BC Rich's 50th anniversary, so these might be limited editions. So yeah, with that information, what do you think? Clearly they're very high spec imports, with price tags to match, especially BC Rich fans. For about $1,500, are you gonna be picking one of these bad boys up? I'd love to know what your thoughts are on these new models. Hey Hunter, have you ever heard about Eastman guitars? Their single cut is a Gibson killer. Yes, I have, and they look sick. Here's the power of YouTube though. I don't even watch that much guitar YouTube and that's how I've heard of them. That's how they're promoting their brand. So if you haven't heard of them, Eastman is a guitar company that prides itself on handcrafting perfect instruments essentially creating art. They use the highest quality materials, traditional building techniques, no CNC involved. Everything is down to the skills of the craftsmen and so far reviews have been overwhelmingly positive. I think Daryl Braun did a video on one, Guitar Max as well, Henning Polly can't shut up about his. Believe it or not, they're actually made in China, but this is no Chibson factory. Eastman has a history of making high quality mandolins and violins. Then they've kind of taken that expertise and applied it to making guitars of the highest quality. I believe they're all double checked by QA and set up in California before shipping to US customers. 
but I could be wrong. Now the one that everybody's been mentioning is their SB series, their line of solid body single cuts. In terms of materials and components, it seems like there have been zero compromises. One piece mahogany bodies, solid maple caps, one piece mahogany necks, mother of pearl inlays. Then we've got Godo hardware, Lawler pickups. I mean, the spec sheet reads like a custom shop wish list. In terms of finishes, most imports, you're looking at plasticky poly, but with Eastman, you've got your choice of vintage nitro, nitrocellulose, and antique varnish. Nitrocellulose is what Gibson uses on their models, and Eastman offers this finish on their gold top, sunburst, and I guess like a tobacco burst type thing. Vintage nitro, I assume is more of a worn or satin finish, and Eastman offers this on a black beauty style and a P90 gold top style. Finally is the antique varnish, which has me really intrigued. Now this is the finish that they would normally use on mandolins or violins, and supposedly it's even softer than nitro to really help the wood resonate. It's not something that many makers do for electric guitars. Off the top of my head, I can't even think of any others. And for antique varnish, they've got four different colors, all of which have been lightly relicked. Obviously, ebony fingerboards and proper maple caps, nitro varnish finishes, go to hardware, switchcraft components, orange drop capacitors, Lawler humbuckers, and most importantly, fully handcrafted. These are not inexpensive guitars. They're not super expensive either for what you get. They compete with like the Gibson Les Paul Standard. They're actually priced just a bit under, so not an impulse buy by any means, but not totally unreasonable either. Since I demoed the standard 60s, I've been looking into authentic single cut alternatives to see what else you can get into that semi-treat-yourself territory. The antique varnish in particular has me interested because I've never played a guitar with that spec before. I'd love to feel how it compares to like the aged nitro on my 72 Custom. The red one in particular just looks stunning, so that's my pick if I have one on the channel. I know normally I stick to guitars that are within my spending budget, but sometimes it's fun to have a little bit of guitar porn on here. What do you guys think? Eastman guitars, yay, nay? And if so, antique varnish, vintage nitro, which do you guys want to see? Hold on the top right. And that'll do it for this week's episode of Ask a Fish. If you're enjoying the content, hit the like button, subscribe, turn on the notification bell. That way YouTube might actually let you know if I've uploaded a new video. Leave your thoughts and questions down below. Links to social media, the Discord server, which I'll try to be more involved with, and merch are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.